Welcome back to another episode of Libra, starring Ray, Kate, and friends. <laughs> <laughs> and they're on time this time, which is cool. It's, it's a bonus. Cool. <laughs> Welcome How's back, everybody. everybody. How's everyone doing? Uh, pretty good. You know, yeah. um, we got a lot to talk about. You know, we had a little pre-show and... I wrote down a, a long list of things for us to discuss. Because anytime they talk about art when we're setting up, I tell them to shut up and say. Yeah, we get the yelled show. at. Everybody, we get yelled at. We get yelled at. It's mostly pre-show. Pre Pre-stream is mostly Kate yelling at us, telling us what not to do, mm -hmm. and giving us just basically a breakdown of how last stream went. And usually, it's not great. Let's just say we're not winning it, Oscars. We, we're understanding that we are bad at what we do, and we're accepting None it. None of that happens. Hey, you guys got a subscriber just now, Sarah Grace213. Sarah, Sarah, wow, two, thank you. A two-month subscription streak. That's right. You, Whoa. Guys, you guys have had subscriptions available for two months now. Nice. And this is so they so if they subscribe now, they're they're in for like two months. Yeah, you're on your second month. This is the last episode we're ever going to do. <laughs> Let's not say anything like that. No. Hey, I mean, that's not true. It's a lie. Sarah, don't leave. No, Sarah, don't. Oh, don't go. I have a quite just subscribed for their two-month streak, too. Yes. Oh, uh -oh. nice. Thanks, oh, no. Thank you. Oh, no. It's helped the Scott has subscribed. You guys are on a hype train. Oh, oh dude, we're on a hype train. A, we don't even have... Train. We don't have the ability to do a hype train like you do on your stream, where it's you put a little conductor best. hat on and Probably for whistle the best. and stuff. I have, yeah, oh, I man. do have a little train conductor hat. Just pretend I'm doing that. Z Mudge just subscribed too. Oh my gosh, that's four subscriptions. Oh my god! Amazing. F in the, Thanks, F in the everyone. chats for all the F in yeah, the chat for, chat for all that. For all the chat, all the okay. resubscriptions, the, the new live brushers and the current live brushers. Hey, in the chat is a ch uh, a comment. Uh, Anthony Holmock says to say hi to Ray. Hey, Anthony. Good to see you. Good to hear from you. Hey. Thanks for joining, man. I don't know if I know Anthony. Uh, I don't know if you met Anthony. Uh, Anthony is a, a student of mine's over in uh, oh, at cool. Fredonia. Yeah. Hey, welcome, um, Anthony. Bring your friends. You know who Anthony knows is uh, uh, Will Primetime Coiner. Oh, a man, our boy Will. I wonder if yeah. Will's coming in today. Yeah, Will, where are you? So, um, well, welcome everyone back. Thank you um, for the subscriptions that are going on right now. Yes, thank you so much. We are here again, painting Predator. Um, one might say this is Predator 3, even though there was never a Predator 3. I specifically in the graphic labeled it Predator Part 3, just so Trace. that nobody got confused. <laughs> yeah, the, you get the it? only... Because yeah. the first one takes place in South America. Right. And this is a South American release only right. version and of Predator. Tyler traces all his paintings. Oh, oh my God. Dude, double burn. Amazing. Amazing. This is great. I'm not even mad about this. I'm not even mad about it. This is amazing. This is great. This is the hype train right there. Oh, man. This stream just keeps so, getting better and better. <laughs> We're going to try and finish these this time, but no promises. No promises, folks. You'll probably finish yours in about 10 minutes, and I will be... Uh, give me a second. Fiddling with stuff <laughs> like I always do. Oh, brother. Tyler still hasn't... I mean, I know that they're there because I've seen the sketch, and you can kind of see them on the stream, but there's a lot of fishnet detailing work yeah. that still needs to be done oh, yeah. on that belly. I'm saving that. That's going to be the that's going to be the good stuff saving it you know sometimes you save like the highlights or the specular highlights or something for the end i'm saving that fish netting it's gonna be the last thing i do oh i can't wait hey ray uh you thinking about getting a new easel yeah oh, what's so, up with that dude what's up with that well i got this like french easel which for those of you who don't know it's like a, a nickname for it. it's a french easel it's a plain air easel it's what people use to go outside and paint and it's like it folds up into a box and then it like tripods out it's like it comes with like a uh, a tray you can hold store your paints in even a built-in like palette that you could use 
uh, it, you can scale up paintings from up, all the way up to like 24 inches. It's sweet. Uh, and I have a full easel. So they come in two varieties, full and half traditionally, the French easels do. And I have a full one. Um, and I'm using it for my digital studio where we uh, stream, uh, where I stream the live brush stuff from. Uh, and it's, it's about, uh, how long has it been since we graduated, Tyler? I'm like, well, I was just about it. to, I was about to ask you, have, have you owned that particular easel for 10 years? Over years? 10, over, <laughs> over 11 years. So I got it like, I think my second year in San Francisco. There we go. Because it was the only I, easel that I, I could half, fit in my studio apartment. Right. Because they, well, they can break down. Which I, I bought a right. half size one back then, which I thought was, was very useful because we could take it clean air, but they're so heavy compared to like the Pochade boxes. And the oh, yeah. Now and, yeah, the strata yeah, boxes. Totally. Yeah, but, um, shit, uh, man, you've got some use out of that boy. Yeah, so I mean, like the thing is, I think it's just like, it's like there's like a top handle that clamps down your piece. Actually, you could, I don't know if you could see it right here. It's a Julian um, one, right? No, it's a Blick. Oh, the Blick. Oh, cool, cool. Yeah, which actually was better made than the Julian easels because yeah, it had hardware stuff in it like the julian ones were more expensive and they had these proprietary screws so if you broke you were done you had to order more parts from julian i forgot you worked at blick so you're like a you're fucking art supply expert coming at you folks what do you need i use my well, code yeah, I, we should get here, that's what we should get we should get a spot <laughs> i'll tell you what i need right here okay this so if folks. anybody wants to know everyone wants to know the secret to tyler's paintings it's one color it's Windsor yeah. Newton Pewter. <laughs> it's new pewter. Here, Write that down. You know, I'm going to set this up here real quick because I forgot to start my time lapse. I'm going to start my time lapse real fast. But um, let's talk about this Windsor Newton Pewter. This is metallic paint. I've never used it. I don't think I'm ever going to use it. I ordered it by mistake. Um, and I don't know what the hell its purpose would be. Like, I don't know. Did you ever paint miniatures? Right. No, no, I wish I did. I wish I did. I got I gotta well, get into it. To fake like to fake metallics, you get metallic paint. It has like little flecks of shiny, I don't know, glitter in it or something. Okay. Um, so that's what's in this. It's full of glitter, it looks like. I I don't I just don't know what I'm gonna ever use it for. Elton Nothing. John portrait. Okay, good point. Oh, well, that's a good yeah. point. Actually, why, that's the reason why we have uh, this wonderful audience. Why don't we just ask the chat? Yeah, folks, everyone out there, what should I use this metallic paint Actually, F in the chat if you think Tyler should use it and only use it for his next live brush painting. Oh, OK. Oh, dude, please, let's do it. Oh, my god. I don't okay, even care if they say F in the both, chat. I'm doing it. You have to pick a, a weird pigment and only use that. For the next painting that means you too ray yeah i will pick uh let's see what's something weird tyler what do you think yellow ochre oh no yeah that's real weird yeah Ivory real weird black. pigment <laughs> no you need to get okay i got some weird ones over here that i've grabbed um transparent white <laughs> permanent mauve that's pretty good Good old permanent mob. You hope that all the colors are permanent. Well, you know, some are not. Tyler, how, are you, how, how can you even pay your mortgage with when you're buying paints like that? You know, I, you just, I don't. I don't do it. <laughs> I just don't pay my mortgage. Is that that simple? Arrangement. Well, I, told, I remember, I, I think it was on one of the last streams where um, I, I held up all the different turquoises that I bought one day. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> You went just nut, nut. Yeah, the, the lady at Blick even made fun of me. So that happened. That's 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 never happened to me. <laughs> so wait, we were talking about the metallic. Okay, so the next painting I do, I'm going to use black, white, and pewter by Windsor Newton. God, Tyler, we just had a bunch of resubscriptions. Do we really want to lose the ground no. in the game? The so, challenge has been set. 
Jacob A. Sweet had an excellent suggestion, which was like hey, Jacob. A, a chrome Mad Max painting using oh, that. Done. Oh, done. I think it's to, to stay on our theme. I have to edit that a little bit. I think it needs to be Road Warrior because it came out in the 80s. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, I guess Mad Max did too, but let's do Road Warrior because I really like Road Warrior. Uh, and then Anthony Holmuck says, imagine Predator, but sparkly. Very scary. <laughs> I like right. it. I was thinking of uh, on this session, like plopping a little bit th of this metallic in there, but I think it's going to be bet... your favorite pigment now. Oh yeah, take that. I bet you. Elizabeth I bet you. Crimson. I bet you. Arnold Schwarzenegger's character had like pewter paint in the jungle with him. He would have been able to just cover it, cover Predator in, and spot him in two seconds. He would have died in like the first five minutes of the film. Right. Yeah. He would have. So. They wouldn't have, he wouldn't have even been in it. He would have just been hanging in the trees, all skinned, like the group that they found. Like, it was just like, he would have still been like above title listings, Arnold Schwarzenegger in The Predator. And The Predator is dead. He'd have been dead. <laughs> been all Carl Weathers. <laughs> oh my God. He betrays him like in the, they're actually going after The Predator in the movie and that's the secret that's like carl weathers is like secret plan right that's the other well, orders he was given i don't even remember you know i don't know if they ever outright remember. say it but it, they seem to be suggesting that the cia knows a little bit something like they, that this wasn't just a rescue mission as they talk about in the movie but um I'm not sure how much they knew about the predator itself. Do you think that they the, wanted them to capture the predator as like a specimen? You like a like a whole Wayland Utani like mm -hmm. scenario? Yeah. Maybe, maybe. Yeah, but I mean, with what? Muscles mostly. A, a net, a fish net. <laughs> Clearly, they tried already. Oh, okay. So if anyone out there is using Winsor Newton. Um, the alkyd white it's really great stuff but if you leave it on your palette it turns to rocks it just turns to stone yeah um, it's pretty hard to mess with it's got a little bit of cement uh, in the pigment yeah that's quick setting <laughs> quick set cement is it the kind of stone that you can break into and the, it's nice and wet inside or is it no it no. dries it, it dries from the center out so oh, it wow. uh it's so for those of you who don't know uh alkyd white i i might have some here do you have a i mean it's it still forms around? yeah yeah i got one i'll show it um it still forms like a little crust on the outside but it's very stiff on the inside it's kind of yeah. pretty hard to wake back up so most this is this is right here i, I have that yeah, so it's, it's ripping, mo most most alkyd. most I, I i was first f in the chat if no no too late too late if i'm more too helpful late. than tyler too late too late watch out ray it's coming to get you <laughs> da -da. <laughs> no Titanium, boy. <laughs> it ain't no that ain't no white <laughs> that ain't no white <laughs> that ain't no white hey uh Couple things. One, there's a there's a quorum from the chat that you guys need to do something spooky. They want to see something spooky. Yeah, I think so. Wait, this holiday. time or next time? No, well, next time. Next or, time. There's next time. Road Warriors not that spooky. Um, but the also note that in three weeks it will be Halloween. We will have a show on Halloween. Oh so really? We should do something really spooky. Ray, are think, you gonna trick yeah. the treaters, or are you gonna be like, you're gonna put a sign up that says Halloween's canceled, dudes? We are doing live brush. No, our, tune in. We'll be done with live brush no. before dark. So yeah, but not out, not out there. Not out where Ray is in the great American middle. No, we we start we northeast. start northeast. <laughs> we start we start Halloween three hours later. Than what most people start. So. Oh, I see. It's fine. Yeah, that makes sense. Hey, here's, makes a, sense. here's a real question from K H E P R A N K Hepburn. Hello. When painting digitally, what strategies do you employ to achieve the same artist's hand look resulting from traditional brushes on gessoed canvas or board? Um, well, like for me, that's, that's a great question. something. Yeah, I like. I love this because this is something I've directly had to do. Um, I actually. 
for me, when I first got into digital, that was like my primary focus was to, it was like, I was almost obsessing over like, how do I get the same look that I had? Yeah. Um, yeah. So when I, when I got into digital, I was just, I already painted in like kind of a chunky way. So that's, I just looked for brushes that were kind of flat or I'd make flat brushes out of the round brush just by kind of squishing it. Yeah, um, but we would kind of obsess over that. I remember most of, a lot of our yeah. conversations all of a sudden turned into like for a while, we're like us figuring out different ways of getting good texture. In, right, because that's digital the, work. That's the thing that's missing for me. Like if you just jump into digital and you don't know what's going on, there's kind of, it's like textureless. Right. Um, it can be very flat and stale. So I, that was something Ray and I were always obsessing about trying to find like, how do I get really organic textures? I think early on, I started just scanning textures. Um, so I would like, I would gesso a little, um, you know, tiny piece of board that could fit on my scanner and I would gesso it white. And then I would scan that really high definition. And then I would just kind of overlay that texture over my whole painting just to give it something traditional, something organic. Oh, and by the way, by Ray and I, Tyler really means that like Tyler was doing most of the work and Tyler would say, Oh man, I found, yeah, I found this really cool way of doing this. And I'm like, sweet, I'll use that. And then yeah, I would just yeah. use that until he figured out something else new. And then yeah, I would, Ray would be like, that. Oh, Oh, you already did it. Okay. I was just about to scan just... something. <laughs> I just figured that out myself. Oh God. So yeah, I, um, you know, I helped Ray along the way when it comes to digital textures, it was, it was all me. You didn't do well, much. That, you showed me the, the, the high pass thing. Remember that? That was very cool. And actually, I think I got that from... Um, Did you get that from Siler? No. Um, Ava Wilderman, I think, is her last full name. She's a, a an, an artist in Ireland. And shout she out to had, the Irish. Shout out to the Irish. Um, she had posted an image. <laughs> I'm going to be real Careful nice. Um, <laughs> she had posted an image that had this amazing watercolor paper texture over it. And I'd messaged her and I was like, how the hell did you do that? And she's like, oh, you, you just scan the watercolor. So you scan the watercolor paper and then you select high pass um, in the filters. And it basically turns everything to a mid gray, but there's still ups and downs on the texture. And then it's you almost like that a... Over like a UV map almost, right? Yeah, almost. Yeah, um, it's yeah. very close to that. And you can put the whole thing over your image and set it to soft light or overlay. I like soft light. And it just gives instant texture to the whole image. So I've actually been doing that since then with um, a gesso scan that I that I took. Right. And it's I just put it right at the end of the painting, sometimes at the beginning so that I have um, texture underneath everything. But I'll, right at the end, I usually put it over the whole image and um, turn it to soft light. And then it kind of gives the whole image this just subtle canvas texture or um, just like gesso marks on board texture. And it's, I have it turned down to like 20% opacity. So you can barely see it. You can only really see it when you zoom in. So it's not something that shows up too much on my prints or when things go to print for magic cards or something like that but it shows up for me when I make prints. So it's, it's almost like something just for me. Like I want that little bit of extra noise. And that, you know, I never even thought about that, that it wouldn't show up because it's reproduced so small for a rep magic card, obviously. Yeah, it doesn't really appear. Yeah, yeah. Only when, they, only when you see it at like really high res, like if I've done key art for magic and they've blown it up really big, then you'll see that, that texture that I've added in but most of the time you don't see it. Yeah, it's 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 a great, uh, great way of getting uh, that texture. I mean, I remember to write this, that's the, uh, I started using it immediately after Tyler showed me. And um, we were one time, we were at the Society of Illustrators in New York. And if those of you that don't know what the Society of Illustrators in New York, uh, is uh, it's basically the uh, the institution, one of the, the main. I would I would argue the main institution for the uh, art of illustration of American illustration uh, right. uh, yeah. in uh, in the country. Uh, and there's 
there's uh there's a society of illustrators in los angeles it's fantastic a society of illustrators in new york is, is, is just older uh, is older version well, and, so. yeah and strangely the los angeles one isn't connected it's just no I it's I thought yeah. that was weird yeah it's it's its own thing you know but equally as you know it's it's an awesome place and and yeah um but the society of illustrators new york is is more of like a museum it's has a big museum component of it anyways every year they have a um an annual competition uh for those of you who don't know what the society of illustrators annual competition is just it's basically you have thousands of like entries and then like only a small like from uh, uh illustration examples from like editorial book covers public and they, all sorts of publishing advertisement storyboarding heck even animation yeah and they break and, those up right into different shows yeah and yeah and they yeah they cut it in half so there's two shows um so i was lucky enough to get in in my first time i got in um i got into this the advertising show uh and uh tyler was in in town for that remember we went to uh remember that party that was great that opening oh yeah and goni yeah. that was like the first time i think you met goni right goni yeah montes. yeah goni montes yeah yeah that dude's awesome um yeah yeah we you we your folks held like a um big thing at their place in queens yeah yeah um, it, was, it was killer that was a really it was good great. trip it was great anyways one of my pieces was in the show obviously and so that piece was a digital piece and i had actually used scanned an old painting texture over it and then placed it over it and i remember the former president of society of illustrators came up to me and, and asked me like hey are you ray bonilla and i said yeah he goes oh is that your piece it's like yeah cool uh and he was like, oh, congratulations, because he had won an award and stuff. But he'd said, it's really great to see oil painters back at the Society of Illustrators. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just sick and tired of this digital stuff. He just doesn't get the same life. Yeah, me and, too, man. Me too, me too. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, oh, man, what do I tell him? And so I, I felt bad. So I told him, I said, it's actually a digital painting. And he was like, what? And I was like, well, you know, but I, uh, I, I started painting in, in oils, you know, and uh but that texture, that was all, is all that texture, you know? So oh man. Hey, you know pass, what? Baby. If you can fix, if you can fake it, just do it. And ever, I've been faking it ever since then. <laughs> I knew that. I knew that. <laughs> but that, I mean, that show was so cool. Cause like, you know, Ray's being humble here, but his painting was like hanging right next to this, they have this big drum in Society of Illustrators that's signed by all these people, and it's signed by Frank Frazetta. And then, like, oh, right yeah. across from where his painting was hanging was an original J.C. Leindecker painting. So, yeah, yeah. Being a little so, modest here. Well, it made my, my piece look really good in comparison. <laughs> Not really. <laughs> that, that, that was definitely, amazing. It was a great yeah. trip. Yeah, it was an awesome show. It was an awesome show. Thanks again for coming. That was cool. Hey. Yeah, we we got to hang out with Greg Manchus, Mark Summers. That was great. Yeah, there was it was back when um I, I haven't been able to make it to any of them in a while, but Richard Solomon yeah, used to do his um he used to do his like annual party kind of right around then. Right. So right. it was a great way to kind of get out, go to society, and then like meet all the the people you know because a lot of the big people in mainstream illustration come out to that show. It's like I'm, I'm sort of different, I guess, when it, I'm at least the stuff I do now is not really in the Society of Illustrators realm. It's no fantasy it's, illustrations is a little different. And it's like Spectrum is kind of the, the workhorse, the, for, the hub for, for it, showing yeah. that off. Yeah. Yeah. I guess like I mean, that's a good good uh, segue to like what quote unquote mainstream illustration is. I, I would argue that like that's kind of what used to be mainstream illustration and is now I think more fantasy art and concept art and art for entertainment, like uh, for sure, for yeah, sure. That's definitely the mainstream. At uh, I think out of the two things, this is just the yeah. most most in use. You know, um, the land, yeah, the landscapes changed a little bit since. Yeah. Um, you know, like illustration for folks out there, you all probably know this. We were watching, but like you know, mainstream illustration used to really heavily be editorial and advertisement publishing yeah, publishing yeah. um and that is that's changed a little bit that landscape's changed quite a bit because you know publishing and advertising um has gone sort of a lot of it has gone 
photographs or um, mm -hmm. lots of uh, manipulation stuff with, with photos and photo shoots and you know that's just how the market goes it's kind of like what happened with Struson like he didn't do movie posters anymore because Hollywood kind of moved towards photography right um, it was easier for them to use photography instead of be having an artist paint it so uh, you know that that's the, the landscape changes like that and but when it comes to illustration now that there seems to be a lot more illustration in visual development for films and video games and um, fantasy uh, properties and sci-fi properties there's a lot more right. illustration on that so yeah the, the landscape's done a little shift and who knows it always shifts back and forth you know it always shifts yeah i mean look at the stuff that you know uh norman rockwell was doing you know right i mean right. publishing it was still publishing but you know there's the the type of publishing you know uh, norman rockwell you know would do, do magazine covers for Saturday Evening Post. And, you know, the magazine back in the day was the primary force of uh, media, basically, and entertainment. Uh, and then TV came along uh, and took some of that, and then that shifted illustration. Uh, and then um, once the internet came, that shifted illustration again. Now, when, but even before that, you know, there used to be these things called these, like, uh, basically like these book, these magazines that would go out that was, that were filled with like short stories. Uh, and every month they would have a new set of short stories. And that was like yeah, the, yeah. the, um, the primary means of uh, uh, entertainment. It was huge. And uh, that's at the same time is actually kind of what birthed uh, was at the start of the, uh, was around the same time that, that was possible because the printing technology made it possible to mass produce uh, things at a really high rate and high volume and not cost like an arm and a leg. And so at that time, you basically coincided with the birth of American illustration because it was a need for artists to illustrate these, uh, these stories um, to set them apart from, from each other. And the magazines all competed for like the best artists. And those artists were like, household names, uh, people like N.C. Wyeth, Howard Pyle, Harvey Dunn, and so on and so forth. And so uh, that was illustration at the time, the story illustrations. Uh, and right. American Illustration had the idea. Oh, boy. Oh, these dogs don't don't like what you're talking about. They don't like history. That's OK. But there's um. oh, boy, oh, boy, oh, boy. <laughs> All right, this is probably okay. So everyone listening, we had um, we have a, an exterminator coming to deal with our ant population. Oh boy. <laughs> okay, Kate's gonna handle this. Um, so everyone in the chat, she'll be back. She'll be back. <laughs> she'll be back. But so, uh, we got ants. We got ants. We got to deal with them. Anyways, yeah, yeah. So so these guys were kind of doing. I mean, I guess you could have like proto pulpy stuff, right? Was that what we would call it? Kind uh, of like I before would, pulp kind of came out. I would, yeah, yes, but it was like high high end stuff. So it was like basically what key art would be today for in concept art. Yeah, right, right. And you know? but it was the stories themselves were kind of like early. They were like pirates and. Yeah, a yeah, lot of adventure yeah, stories. Yeah, adventure stories, right, right. So yeah, you're right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm just trying to think because I'm thinking of like the the period slightly after that when when he got into all the pulp and like the earliest fantasy illustrators started coming out. Right. So like you had a lot of like so Treasure Island was was written around that time. Swiss Family Robinson and right, uh, right. The Boys King Arthur and like so fantasy people were were starting to paint dragons but not nearly as much and then um so but that that was like a big thing and those those illustrators i'll just give you a, an example uh they made basically like three times the median household median income per illustration yeah uh, and they did like crazy times. dozens of them a year and so they were like rock stars right and so um, I mean, what was it equivalent? We looked this up in school once too. It was like yeah, so six, sixty grand or something. They were making yeah, it was some, something something crazy like sixty grand. Yeah, when because it was pre World War II. So, um, like uh, so the 
so publishing like the, the the budget and stuff like that have never the dollar amount has never changed but inflation has that's the historical yeah. thing about illustration but I'll, I'll tell you like when uh, norman rockwell was i was just rereading this uh, norman rockwell did an illustration he made three thousand dollars a painting right uh, thirty five hundred dollars sorry for a saturday evening post cover the just to give you a in the 50s what that how much right. that, crazy. that was uh was a an average house cost in the country at the time cost thirty two hundred dollars so every month he could have bought a house yeah he was living he was living large <laughs> he's living large but it, it kind of uh, puts it into context on like what he was able you know there's a, there is a certain aspect to like what he was achieving visually that may be tied to the fact that he was you know making like an entire year's salary absolutely <laughs> absolutely yeah and and the and the and because everyone was i mean this was you had to hand paint everything and it was highly um, competitive it's highly competitive you know the uh the 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 deadlines for these pieces were you know the amount of time that they had i mean you get an entire month or, or more yeah. for, for pieces, for a given piece, just because that was just how long it took. And and so things moved a little bit, a lot more slowly at the time too. Um, well, that's kind of like, at least with JC Leindegger, like he had a, he was working on- It's a classic example, yeah, yeah. He had tons of time for that, the, the yeah. kind of stuff he was doing. Enough to yeah. have models, like models posing for it. Yeah. My dog yeah. is, my dog's gonna kill this, um, he's ready to kill this guy. It's a vicious. <laughs> He's a vicious, vicious creature, man. Okay. She does not so, like a dude coming into the house. I'm surprised you even have ants with, with that <laughs> guard dog there. <laughs> well, you know, not super effective. But, um, <laughs> what were we saying? What were we saying? So no, so we were talking about JC Leindecker, which who's another great example. So like, okay, I'll I'll tell you the story. Uh, so N.C. Wyeth, Howard Pyle, um, they are household names, right? Turn of the right. century. This is the beginning of American illustration. They are basically like the equivalent of like Spielberg or, you know, the great directors, you know, are, I mean, they are rock stars. They're hanging mm -hmm. out with like all the, the fa anyone famous, they're hanging out with them. So uh, the, these magazines that had all these, uh, these, these short stories basically were the driving force of all of this, obviously, right? And uh, these guys thought that this was going to last forever. And, you know, Howard Pyle uh, really pushed the idea that um, they, him and his students, like Harvey Dunn, N.C. Wyeth, and, mm -hmm. um, and such, were creating, a, like, the first true American art form. Like, it was born in America, and, like, all the aesthetics were, were from that were, you know, took place in America in a sense, right? And so um, they really thought that they were, it was a brand new visual language, which it was, uh, but they thought they were gonna be basically put in the same realm as like, you know, Bouguereau or Jerome or the great artist of Rembrandt, you know, um, the great art movements, you know, that, that type of deal. Well, uh, one day, uh, the magazines when, or at some point, the magazines realized that the majority of their income wasn't coming from subscribers. It actually was coming from advertisers. Mm -hmm. And people were taking out ads and all their, their stuff. Uh, because again, you know, with the popularity came people wanting to sell their stuff, sell stuff on it because they wanted as much eyes on um you know, their product as possible. So they would take out ads. When uh, the publishers realized that, they moved to, uh, uh, to basically attract more advertisers. And so what they did was they made things that were, they started to make magazines that were more about the everyday life and more about like niche things uh, and started to target people that were more, uh, more apt to spend more money, you know? Mm -hmm. And, um, and so like things like lifestyle stuff started to come in. Okay. Right. Right. So, right. so, so when, once that happened, NC Wyeth, Howard Pyle, 
Harvey Dent, all these name artists, these, these name artists all lost all their work and, and they couldn't find work anymore because the magazines had shifted away from story illustration, swashbuckles, swashbuckling and all that stuff. It just started to die off. Uh, and uh, Howard Pyle, you know, ended up getting a job as an art director and kind of uh, passing away, unfortunately, f really frustrated. Uh, and same thing with uh, N.C. Kind of Wyeth. Tragedy, I mean, really. It was, it was really, yeah, N.C. Wyeth actually uh, tried to get into painting and was a really frustrated artist and felt that like he had really wasted his, his career and his life being an illustrator. I mean, he was, there's a quote that he talked about how he really felt that he had wasted his time being uh, in illustration and about how Howard Pyle, you know, uh, misled him and his students, you know. Uh, sure. And, so, and I mean, I can see it from his perspective that it would feel like that. Obviously, we have, yeah. the, you know, the luxury of hindsight and we're going to be like, no, man, you're a legend. But, right, you know, right. this is his livelihood. This is his life. So it would make sense yeah. that he would be disillusioned by it. And, you know, I mean, they made a ton of money, so they were fine financially, but they were also, they just completely evaporated in terms of their, their re relevance evaporated. And that's what would really hurt. Because again, yeah, they really sure. felt that they were on the, the, the precipice of just, they were on the, the wave, sitting right on top of the wave of like the next great art movement. Um, and honestly, so. like, for, at least from my point of view, they 100% they were, you know, they-, they Right, right. While, while like, you know, Caravaggio and, and Michelangelo and, um, you know, obviously they're semi-contemporaries, but they, they were doing illustration work for the church. And right. that was the big money maker then. So right. the- um, so, you know, these great American illustrators were for that short period of time in that golden age, they were, they didn't have the church to work for, but they had all these big magazines and right. they were, they were those, those equivalents to those guys, those characters. Yeah. It's, it's, and it's pretty wild, like the, <clears throat> how that changes, right. And how the main vehicle changes. And so like after those, those magazines start to turn into more lifestyle magazines, rather than these story driven ones, like, of, like fantasies and stuff like that. Uh, you had illustrators that came, started to come up in the ranks uh, that were that became household names and celebrities that did really great lifestyle esque, fashionable illust illustration. And enter J C Lindecker. Yeah, the ultimate. That's um, the ultimate. The arrow, one, right? the arrow collar man. Right. Uh, and he was, you know, the the illustrator of his time. And um, and then that was like, I mean, they, they, him and I mean, he lived in the most expensive of houses and hung out with like huge, uh, all the celebrities and like, cause he was, he was a celebrity himself. Uh, he was so, that rock, like he was the rock star for sure, man. Oh yeah, yeah. And um, eventually what had happened was uh, the styles had changed and people, you know, uh, that sort of the high life, high, high lifestyle of like the, the 20s, the roaring 20s, this was uh, just to give you some context, uh, into the 30s, um, basically slowly turned into a little bit more, you know, you had like World War II happening, you know, uh, and Sorry about this. <laughs> interests were shifting and, and it was more about, it was sort of everyday life things, you know, and uh, more sort of like middle America and JC Leindecker did not do that really. He did right. these epic pieces. So he started to fall out of favor and he faded into, um, you know, uh, irrelevancy and essentially, he, yeah. Yeah. I mean, he died, he died. He, he was such a rock star. He, his idea was like, people asked him how, I was like, give you an example of how much of a rock star he was. <laughs> just, just imagine giving this advice to somebody who's asking this. Some, somebody had asked him, how do you, how do you stay motivated, right? And do you know this story? No, tell no, me. tell me. I don't so think I've like, heard this. How do, you, how do you stay motivated? Well, and J.C. Leindecker's answer was, I always spend way more uh, than I can afford. And that's what keeps me at the easel. <laughs> so the man was like no, spending I, like right. crazy. I like you know? this. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, no one do this, but you know, if you're no gonna be a rock star like JC, yeah. The, so, you, you know, know. I, there's um, the dude was one of my is one of my favorites of all time. Uh, yeah, and, ditto, no question. 
I really love, I mean, I'm a huge Norman Rockwell fan as well. And there's, um, I love when you kind of look at early Rockwell stuff when he was doing early Saturday Evening Post stuff. Mm -hmm. And it's like, it's, you can tell his inspiration is heavily J.C. Leindecker. Like his early stuff is all J.C. Leindecker stuff. Yeah. And then he, then he shifts and starts realizing like, oh, he's got a whole different style of adding fidelity and right it's just it, it slowly morphs i have this giant tome of a book that's it's like 333 or 335 norman rockwell covers and oh yeah i've seen that book that thing's huge yeah, man it's massive i found it in i found it in in japan in um, tokyo at this bookstore for 35 dollars. <laughs> oh my god <laughs> it was very cheap um and it's got everything, but it's chronological, like it's in order. So you can just flip through it really fast and see the evolution of, of Rockwell's work. He's, and, you he's, know, the, I know we have, the, he's, he's like an American illustrator, right? And there's a lot of, I don't think, at least from the, the illustrators I've talked to in Europe, like they are kind of aware of him, but they're not as much aware of him as I thought they would be. Really? Interesting. Yeah. The, you remember um, there was a, um, I guess I don't want to name names for people who yeah. don't know these guys, but um, th- there was one artist that I know who's done tons and tons and tons of work. Amazing guy. And he was visiting and he saw this Norman Rockwell book that my friend Richie had. And he was like, whoa, this guy's amazing. He must've never stopped working. And we were both like, whoa, whoa, whoa. You've never heard of Norman Rockwell? You know, it's like, holy shit. It, it must be a, just a localized thing, I guess. Maybe, maybe, yeah. We're so know. used to him. It's, it's so funny. I, you know, I think maybe partly the reason might be artists around it. Now, it, it's funny how things sort of come around, right? Because nowadays, I think concept artists and ar- artists today are working, especially in entertainment, know who Howard Powell and the, and the Brandywine artists are, and know who right. J.C. Leindecker is, because you could see the influence just in everything like everything everything you know when it um, becomes a whole style like there's a there was a valve game called team fortress that i was just gonna say team fortress no, too yeah. is no, literally a, is a love JC letter <laughs> a love letter to jc Lindecker. yeah i love it it's and you can yeah. see it in all the styling yeah it became it's such an a it's such a golden age like such a period of aesthetic that it's become the inspiration for entire games And, and such an interesting, like, and, and like you, you look at, and like animation, especially background design. And, and like, if you look at anything that has light in it, chances are it's based off of like, it's heavily influenced by NC Wyeth and mm-hmm. the Brandywine artists. I mean, they're just, there's no, no question about it. I mean, that, and that, that's how Tyler and I learned about all these uh, artists. I mean, they were, I, I had known of NC Wyeth, but I, I actually found out actually how, how did I find out about NC Wyeth? I I found out about NC Wyeth actually from a DVD. Oh, of, really? Uh, Treasure Treasure Planet. It was a on the special features of oh, the yeah, animated no, movie, right. and they had and they talked about their whole entire visual design. What was it inspired by? And it was uh, the Brandywine artist, and it did this whole documentary on them. I'm like, where the hell did these guys come from? How how come nobody's Dude, told me about these these artists? You know. I'm glad you brought that up though, because it's. Like that kind of stuff is like, you know, my, like we've gone over a million times in this show is that like one of my big inspirations was this film. And that's film is like what exposed me to a lot of artists. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I never knew who Mike Mignola was until I saw the art of Atlantis, you know, right. it was way before, right. um, way before Hellboy. I, I never knew who, um, you know, I essentially didn't know who uh, like Frank Frazetta was until I saw Ralph Bakshi's Fire and Ice. Mm-hmm. Um, so it was like um, a lot of my knowledge of artists came from watching behind the scenes of fantasy films and seeing like, oh, we just did it based off of this artist's work. And I'm like, well, who the hell is that? And that right. kind of introduced me to illustration. Isn't it crazy though? Like, it's like what we always talk about is like nothing happens in a vacuum. Right, right. And and these artists have just been around forever. And we just, it's just, it's so great when you run across their work because it's like, it, it, it almost reveals, it's so impactful that it, it, 
in a way it almost reveals something about yourself that you don't even know you know mm-hmm. it gives you so much personal insight you know and it kind of contextualizes your your interests uh in a yeah, really profound a, way right there's a weird effect of like you're just seeing something visually and, and immediately being like i like that yeah and then not knowing why and it, it does reveal something about you And we, you know, yeah. and, and I, I think it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's awesome. I th- and, and I don't think, and I, I'm, we're just lucky that we had, I mean, we did, we had the internet, obviously we're not like ancient, but like we, not everything was as available as it is now. And we were lucky that we had our teachers. I remember Zhao Ming would bring mm-hmm. in our teacher, Zhao Ming Wu. Uh, remember, obviously you remember Zhao Ming, but uh, uh, he would bring in like, different books all the time and we just leave them on a table yeah and, crazy books from china yeah from china with all these russian painters you know just like filled oh, yeah, to the I, brim with stuff you know that stuff blew me away i highly encourage everyone out there listening to look into the russian painting tradition like people like eli ripon um these are guys like that xiaomi Wu kind of exposed us to because we didn't you know, just like I was saying, like maybe some people in Europe aren't too super familiar with American illustrators from the golden age. We're not familiar with all these incredible Russian painters and painters in China yeah. um, that are just phenomenal artists. Um, you know, we just did, we just didn't, aren't exposed to those art books very much. Yeah, that's just, that's just, I mean, product of the Iron Curtain in many ways, right? I mean, sure. Uh, yeah. But, but, you know, I think, yeah, uh, that's Eli Repin. If you just it's R E P I N. You Google yeah. that and just say Repin Art. Uh, you know, you, you'll see a bunch of stuff. One of my favorite uh, paintings of all time is one of his. That um, it's like I forget what it's called. The was it the bar letter? No, it's the letter to the like. It's the guys. Oh all the yeah, table. the Cossacks with the Cossacks the, yeah, or something the Cossacks. like that. Yeah, yeah. Holy yeah. smokes! I yeah, think it that's... took him like ten years or something to paint that, but it did. It's wow. a masterpiece. Well, that, that one that one book that um, Zhao Ming showed us, it had the time span. It had the size oh, of the painting and the time span right. in which he painted them. That's right. But, yeah. It did. Oh, my God. Yeah, that's so good. It's so good. Check them out. Everybody check them out. You yeah. will not be disappointed. Repin. He's got that one painting of the um, one of the Russian czar's kids being assassinated. In, and it's yeah. the father is kind of holding him in the in the living room on this big rug, and it's just yeah. the two of them. And he's like holding the, the his son's head, and all this like incredibly red crimson blood is like bubbling out. Between. Awesome. It's an insane, insane image. And if you've if it, it's it, so Reppin's one of those artists, it, very much like in the same vein as like N. C. Wyeth and all of them is, you'll see their artwork and and think, I've seen that before. I don't know where. And like, right. it reminds me of this movie because, and, and the reason why that is, is because literally the artist like said, I want a scene that looks like this. Let's mm-hmm. do a scene that looks like that, you know? Well, that's um, Conan, right? Like Conan the Barbarian is the director saying, I want a scene that looks like this for Zeta painting. Right, you know, exactly. that, That's the whole movie. Right, absolutely, yeah. Oh, Conan. Conan, you know, the, Conan's an interesting one because it's one of should my we, favorites. Should we, should we do uh... a... <laughs> Hell yeah. Hell yeah, we should oh do a Conan painting. Oh, my God. Bom, 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 And the, bom, the guy who bom, did... Bom, um... bom. I like this. Keep going, dude. Keep going. I like this. That, that, that's all <laughs> I, I know. Right. That, that movie is like a for me it's like a case study in really simple but like almost perfectly executed um visual development like the first the, one yeah the first one the um the Tulsa Doom Tulsa Doom I, I never really know exactly how to pronounce yeah, it Tulsa but, um, Doom, the, the, yeah, yeah. the two snakes it's there are so many variations of the two snakes in the movie but they yeah. always read as exactly that culture like that evil empire yeah it's just it's so well put together um it's, I, yeah, it's, it's kind of crazy when you think about it right i mean like it was all designed by that thing. i forget his name bob he just died like a couple weeks ago 
um, I'm blanking on his name, Bob something. Maybe in the chat, you guys know his name. He, but he did all the design work on all the visual development work on Conan. Oh, really? What, what else did he do? Um, I, he worked on Alien. I mean, I oh, wow. He did the um, spacesuit design on Alien. I'm blanking. Anyways, he, he did a lot of visual development work in the late 70s um, on sci-fi stuff, and as well as into the early 80s. But he recently passed away. I did not know that. All right. Well, uh, I did not know that. Well, finally, <laughs> finally, something Ray didn't know about. <laughs> I love, um, I love, but, I love Conan the Barbarian. I love oh, Conan the, the Barbarian. Best. I wasn't too keen on the um, the remake. There were some cool scenes, but I wasn't super keen on it. With Ivan Drago, uh, Jason Momoa, or which one? Yeah, the, the Jason Momoa one. Um, yeah, I, 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 I struggled cool, to get through just... it. He's Yeah, it's nothing against him. I, I just don't think that they... There's a simplicity to Conan. Yeah, that... yeah. and... Uh, um, yeah. Oh, no, go ahead, go ahead. No, go ahead. What were you going to say? Well, I mean, I was going to say, like, I love Conan the Barbarian with Arnold Schwarzenegger, but I, I do kind of agree with Frank Frazetta in that, like, Conan is not an Arnold Schwarzenegger type character. No. No, he's And not. they kind of... Um, with the Jason Momoa thing, they were just kind of trying to find another Arnold Schwarzenegger. Right. And it, like, it would have been better if they kind of pushed it back towards what Conan is kind of supposed to be in, in the old comics. Like he's, he's much more of a, like a smaller guy that can, can take, you know, he's like kind of like a Wolverine, like a smaller guy who can take like a he's massive a, beating. He's exactly like a Wolverine. Is Wolverine is basically Conan. Yeah, essentially, yeah. But not Canadian. <laughs> <laughs> which is you know that's a minus i'd say in, in wolverines i mean in conan's, yeah. conan's um, <laughs> department it's a and minus. we lost canada we just lost canada i don't know I was, i'm saying canada yeah. is amazing like it, it, because yep, they, they, because they conan out the out barbarian is not canadian that's why he sucks <laughs> yeah so if you ever if, if you've ever read go read some robert e howard conan stuff it is it's so good it's so it yeah. Oh man, it is so good. Or the the comic, the Dark Horse Comics did a a Conan series um, like ten years ago with this artist by the name of Carrie Nord, C A R Y N O R D, and and it was very faithful comic books. You could find them pretty cheap now, I think. Uh, very faithful uh, adaptations of some of the of the short stories. These are short stories. These Conan stories, and they're they're awesome. They're awesome. And that's Conan. Yeah. It's it's so Conan, you know. Uh, Kate and I are reading a book right now that um, I, I picked up a little bit and then I kind of dropped it, but I'm going to pick it back up again. And she's well into it. It's called The the Blade Itself by Joe Abercromb Abercrombie. And it's got a character in it called Logan Nine Fingers. And he really reminds me of like the original Conan the Barbarian. Like uh, Logan Nine Fingers? Logan Nine Fingers, yeah. Boy, yeah, if it's you didn't, so if you wanted a thread that that connected Wolverine and uh, Conan, <laughs> he did. He it, did. it must have been what he was after. Hey, uh, this um, is this is kind of an. But awesome it's great. Question um, too. Check it out. A lot of great characters in that. Story. Uh, sorry, I'm realizing. I love the first Conan story. He's like he's because he's the first Conan story is like he's a king of this place called Samaria, which is where he's from. I was trying to figure out. I was like, where's Conan from again? Um, and uh, it's like just the like, real Samaria, the, like the Samaria. meant to be like the real, Sum like the ancient Sumerians. No, Samaria, 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 Samaria. That's right. Okay, Sumeria. oh my Conan history. Uh, oh, Kate's back. Kate's like, back. Yeah, Kate's I was, back. I was, I was Thank actually God. talking to you guys for a while there, but I had muted it because of all the working. Hey. Here's, uh, there's, there's been some good questions and I'm going to get to them. Um, Lil, oh, okay. this, Lil Sis, Brandy Ackerman, 86. Uh, I'm getting paints for Christmas and I'm trying to learn what the different brushes are, uh, like flat brushes, shader brushes, et cetera. Can you guys just run down some like, if, if for a very, very, you know, beginner? Yeah. Oh. Let me grab some brushes and show you. Um, so I'll try and get all the same ones so you can see, but. 
the primary difference is going to be um, you're going to have like essentially a flat, um, which is this guy. It's a square brush. It ends in a square, but when you turn it on its side, it's very sharp. It's a flat. Um, I like to use these for like carving out planes and stuff, plane changes. And then the, the, there's also the filbert. Um, there's, there's a bunch more as well, but these are the two primary ones I use. Um, filbert is, it's, it's like a flat, but it's rounded on the edges. It's still, when you turn it to the side, it's still very sharp. Um, this is great for just general mark making. Um, there's also these little guys, which I don't use very much, but um, they're just called rounds. They're fully round, just round. Yeah, that's brushes. what I'm using right here. Is rounds. Yeah, that's about it. I mean, there are there are brights as well, but they're not super different from a flat. They're just like slightly shorter bristles than a yeah. flat. It's basically a uh, if you really rub down your uh, your flats, it, they'll turn into brights. Right. So yeah, and they're running on really, paper. Yeah, Greg Manches, That's all he uses, man. Flats or brights? Brights, brights. Yeah. yeah. I'm like, you know, but it makes sense because it's like that kind of squatty type of uh, chunky, I don't know, paint stroke. Yeah, he's a chunky painter, right? Like he wants to just lay the, the minimum amount of, he wants to get the image across in the minimum amount of brush strokes. And he does it super well. Chunky painter. Got that, throwing that chunk down, man. Yeah, he's got, I mean, I assume that Greg kind of got that maybe from the Hildebrands or something like that. No, he, he got Frank Duvenick. Oh, no, me, uh, yeah, and Mead Schaefer, I guess, too. And Mead Schaefer, yeah. 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 Hey, I guess speaking that's what it would... of Frank Duvenick, Nick DeLuca96 wants to know, Ray, can you talk about Frank Duvenick and do you know any art books of his paintings that are good? Yes, uh, Frank Duvenick is an artist in around the 19th century, um, really was, uh, he studied in, so back in the day, uh, the, there was two major academies in the 19th century, which was kind of like the, the height of like representational art in many ways, in many ways, some say, or at least in neoclassical like art was uh, because really the schools were like in Paris, which was one of the centers. It was probably arguably the center of the Western art world at the time. Uh, art was so important that it was um, as important as a branch. Of, it was a branch of government basically. Uh, yeah, and the so, salon, right? Is that what it yeah, was called? Yeah, yeah. And they had like they had a minister of art, and they had I forget, like the way someone would have like a, sec a secretary of art in the same way, like somebody would be a secretary of defense, you know, because mm -hmm. um, it was it was basically the cornerstone of a, a nation's identity is essentially how they they looked at it. Okay, so that means that means that you know you could uh, a, a lot of drive into that. So there was there was a lot of draw to study in these places. Um, and so there was two major, with three, I would say maybe three, maybe four, uh, maybe Russia, five. maybe five, uh, places you would study in <laughs> Paris for sure. Uh, Germany, Munich specifically is the second, uh, at the Spanish Academy in Spain, uh, like Bar I think it might've been in Barcelona. I might be wrong with that about that. Uh, and then the fourth one which was kind of like segregated from all of them was, was Russia. Uh, and so- It's almost um, like culinary world um, today. Oh, that's a you great know? comparison. It's a great comparison. Yeah, like yeah. You, go to, you go to Paris if you wanna learn how to make food kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. And so around the 19th century, it, it was a really interesting time because uh, the late 19th century was, there was a lot of, uh, artists from the, from other, especially from the Americas, uh, from North America and, and such that uh, were started to study uh, in Europe. Uh, and so a lot of artists went to Paris, um, two of the main draws were either Paris or Munich. Uh, and so Frank Dubinick studied in uh, the Munich school and the Munich school was actually really close. Uh, it was very different stylistically speaking. It was very painterly, very big, 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 uh, it was known for its very squared off strokes, uh, like tiles of paint, which is actually really similar to the uh, Russian school of painting. 
Uh, and so Duvenek went there uh, and studied, uh, studied there and then came back to Cincinnati and started teaching in Cincinnati and, and um, established basically the Cincinnati art scene. Uh, and uh, there's still a lot of painters that, uh, you know, that came from that lineage of people that he had uh, uh, taught. And so Duvenek was known for bringing that like squared off, like chunky brushstroke uh, like uh, way of painting. So it's Duvenek, D-U-V-N-E-C-K um, to, to basically to the, the States. Uh, and um, so someone like Greg Manchus uh, was, was super inspired by him because it was a really painterly way of, of placing down oil paint. And at, at the time that Greg was, was an illustrator, um, was starting as, off as an illustrator, any, the type of painting that was in uh, fashion was very tight, very photorealistic um, stuff. And that was just because there was no Photoshop and um, the tastes were getting more, it just came from being really, really expressionistic in the seventies and sixties. Uh, and so, and things were, TV and movies were starting to influence visual culture a lot more. It's really interesting, but- I mean, so do, do, to interject though, at least um, yeah. is, I, I found, <clears throat> what I've always found interesting about that particular period from Dubinek and like before was that um, all these people went to academies that essentially taught them all how to paint the same way. Yeah. And yeah. so they all came out with like a very, very tight, similar style. Like they weren't really open, super open to um, individualistic styles. It was like, you, this is how you paint. Right. Don't try and right. paint another way. And then, right. you know, people broke the rules as soon as they got out. But it's, it's, it's so crazy to think of a period of time when everybody at one particular school all learned to paint the exact same way, which is so different from our, the, way, the way we learned in our school. Right. Like we, all, we all learned from similar people, but we were never like told to make marks and paint the exact same way. Right. I mean, and we were, and every class was different. Like we had, you had a yeah. different artist that was, had a different approach. And that was the whole, the great thing about learning that was, was, uh, and, and seeing actually, you know, and that's the great thing about, uh oh, we should, we need an emote for him. But that's the thing that for Bill Mon, yeah, for book that Bill Mon had, uh, had talked about was, or, that's what he, he was, great thing about him was he, he took all of those, um, these ideas and, and showed us how they were all connected. Um, yeah. yeah. Now, uh, so the only th thing I would say, last thing I would say about Duvenick was in terms of a book, I think there was this um, book, it's an old book called, the, I think it's like a brush with genius. Uh, and it's got uh, a, a, a paint, a painting of uh, Frank Duvenick's one of his famous paintings called smoking boy. It's just a, a kid smoking a cigarette. Um, don't smoke kids, uh, yeah, but not good um, don't do it. <laughs> Hell to it. But do like, like Jablinski. Hell to it. Um, so uh, I think it's a brush with genius. I think it's Frank Duvenick. Um, uh, but you, there's a Facebook group of Frank Duvenick's uh, like fans uh, that, that talk a lot about his, you know, his ties to Cincinnati and stuff like that, that are actually helmed by uh, an artist by the name of, um, oh my God, I just shorted out here. Oh, dude, Ray. It's on a roll. He gave Carl us, Samson, he gave Carl Samson. Oh, nice, nice. I was going to say, man, he gave us this huge history that was amazing. And then the ref just dropped Girl. the ball right at the end. Carl, Carl Samson is a really, really great portrait painter. Um, and uh, yeah, so uh, yeah, I would, I would, uh, Frank Dubedek, awesome artist. Do you have- Yeah, man, he's awesome. Go Dude, ahead. remember the Frank Dubedek, sorry, remember the Frank Dubedek in the, the, the Young Museum with the, the man with the turban? Oh yeah. Oof. Whoa, mom, that is like an incredible piece. That was uh, a particular, we had one of our teachers, uh, you know, I'm not gonna name names, um, brought Bill us Ma to- <laughs> Bill Ma brought us there. <laughs> He brought Kate, us to this we can't San Francisco stop. place. <laughs> brought us to um, the De Young in San Francisco, amazing museum. Um, and that was just that—that that was mind blowing. I—I've not yeah. seen a painting like that in 
ages, if ever. Is there a Duvenek collection of paintings that you particularly recommend? Uh, like in, in a museum wise? Well, like you know, a, they're in hard a book, to- In a book form? I think that that uh, Rush for Genius is the best one that I found. Cool. Uh, yeah, that was the best one that I found, I think. There you go, Nick DeLuca, 96. Hey, um, little sis Brandy Ackerman is, is, uh, was asking about whether you guys are painting in oils or acrylics. Um, and I told her that, you, Tyler, you usually choose oils, and Ray, you usually choose acrylics. But I thought it'd be interesting for you guys to talk about why you choose those medium. Yeah, yes. I mean, um, go for it, Ray. I mean, uh, who, who wants to start? You want to start, Ray? Or I can start. No, I've been talking, I've, I've been given Ray that history. Won't yeah. history up. List. Take your opportunity. I know, because you've been talking for, <laughs> I don't have a watch on, but Jesus. Um, no, so I, I mean, I'm about to venture into more acrylic stuff because I think it's actually the, the place where I should, it's the medium I should be working in. But um, I haven't jumped into it yet. I'm going to soon. But I've just, I'm just so used to working with oils when it comes to traditional medium that that's why I've been using this. The advantages that I find in oils are um, you can get a lot of a la prima stuff, a lot of wet and wet. So you can, um, the paints stay wet for a while. So you can move them around to get nice blended edges. Um, you can really like hone your edge control. There's a, um, you know, there are different advantages for every medium, but that's the thing that I tend to go with. It's my favorite aspect of um, painting is, is, is like a really wet appearance. Like it allows me to get all this sort of smudgy detail in the background over here. Um, and while I'm doing it in stages, I'm still, I'm still pushing for that look, but um, acrylics have a different feel. And I think, cause Ray uses them a lot. He can probably dig into that. Yeah, I mean, I think, uh, so this is, right now I'm, I'm painting in, uh, this is actually oils that I'm painting in, but I start my paintings a lot of times in acrylics because acrylics dry fa much faster than oils. And so it allows me to layer color a lot quicker. So a lot of my preliminary paintings, all of my, for the most part, my paintings have been, are ultimately oil paintings, but they have an, a very extensive acrylic under layer uh, to them. It's like kind of my first pass. And I do that because I, I want to work really fast and uh, make quick corrections. And if I need to make these large corrections, it, I could, uh, uh, I like working in the medium. I'll need a medium that dries really quickly uh, to do that. So I can paint over things uh, as I, as needed. And th that's what acrylic affords me, you know, um, but it helps me just paint faster when I'm on deadlines and, and things like that. Um, but again, I, I, I use it for that. And then they, the thing with acrylics is that like, since they dry, the great thing about them is that they dry fast and the really crappy frustrating thing about them is that they dry fast. And so, um, I use acrylics for what they're good for. Uh, and then when I'm, when I can, can't push a painting anymore in acrylics and it's just getting frustrating and you, you know, uh, I'll, I'll switch to oils. And you can put oils on top of acrylics, but you can't put acrylics on top of oils. Um, right. So this actually brings us kind of into the the mind that this is the, like the conversation you and I were having the other day. Is my my mindset is always in oils, right? Um, but lately, I've been painting my magic cards traditionally in oils. But I trained for ten years essentially. I trained myself digitally um, after art school. So my thinking now is, it feels to me like, and I was chatting with Ray about this um, earlier in the week, that it feels to me that actually acrylic is the right place for me because my digital approach is actually kind of like that. Like it's my initial block ins and everything are really quick and they establish value and, and color. Um, and then, and then I go in and adjust edges. So I think, and I'm just letting everyone into my, what's going on in my head as to my processes. I think my traditional work, I'm gonna do more in acrylic. And then my fi finishing touches when it comes to little bits of edge control are gonna be in oils. Um, that's kind of what my head is going towards. Um, maybe it'll work, I don't know, but I feel like it's more close to how I it's work. not going to work. 
it's gonna be a failure. <laughs> but I think it'll be more comfortable because, like Ray just said, it's you you can paint a lot quicker. You can get ideas around a lot quicker because of the dry times. Um, and then once I have that established, I think I'll move into oils and finish it. We'll see. We'll see. Maybe I'll try it on the stream. Dude, you should do it. I mean, I listen, I never, I didn't start painting in acrylics until for finished pieces until well after school, you know, because sure. I was frustrated. I was just frustrated with drying times and just, uh, I was painting in a really small closet of a, of a room uh, and uh, I couldn't handle like the fumes were really, you know, uh, like we'd use a lot of fast drying mediums like liquid and things like that. And that was... I just couldn't work like that um, because it was just too fumey. And um, so I started to experiment with other ways of, of doing paintings. And that's what I came across. You know, I ex did a lot of experimentation though. So, and that was one of the solutions that I came up with, you know. Uh, when you were, you were, and you brought me into this too, was, um, and we're going to advertise our favorite brand of pigment again. Um, but you found that, correct me if I'm wrong, that um, Windsor Newton makes really great acrylic, professional yeah. acrylic, not their yeah. regular acrylic, but their professional one doesn't dry at a different value. Like it holds oh, yeah. the so, value. So the problem with, with acrylics is since they dry fast and this, they're like, oh, it's like the value shift uh, from wet to dry. But since that happens so quickly, uh, it's like you put down a value and once it dries, it's a completely different value. And it's, it's just infuriating especially when you're coming yeah. from oils and so i've and asked get, around like this happens in oils too but it, yeah, it's not totally. as immediate no it's not not as nearly as immediate and you can always get back to that and by that point you you want to you know you would just stop working and then wait wait for it and oil out like i just did you know with the medium uh, like the both of us just did you know before working back in um so I would ask around, I asked like all these people, all these artists, I would go to cons and ask them like, okay, you painted acrylics. How do you, you know, figure out like, how do you deal with the color shifts? They drive me crazy. And like, did I ever tell you I, I, I met Basil Gogos? No. Oh shit. So yeah. So there's this artist by the name of Basil Gogos who did uh, all these famous movie monster magazine um, yeah. covers. What was B A S I L G O G O S, I think. Yeah, the um, book. The book was oh, what? Scary stories? Is that what it was? Yeah, the, so I the, forgot uh, what it was. Periodical. Yeah, yeah it was like. Yeah, it's like, it's a. It was yeah. That's a good question. I don't know. Um, I think it was scary stories, but I could be totally wrong. So he painted in gouache and he did a bunch of stuff in acrylics, and he he was there at this show at New York Comic Con and one of the comic conventions. I forgot what it was, but I was like. Oh my God! Yes, I can actually get an answer from a legend. And he had said, "What is like? I, it's like I, I, what color shift?" <laughs> Great. He's like, "Are you sure you're using acrylics?" And I'm like, "Yeah, yeah." It's like that's never happened to me. And I realized. So I, I eventually I asked. Like I was, I met Greg Hildebrandt. And I asked him and he's like, oh yeah. He goes, you know, I've been painting with acrylic so long that like, I just don't even notice it anymore. Right. And, I, and my I friend Steve so, Prescott's the same way, man. He didn't, he, he said that he's like, he didn't really notice the shift. Steve, Steve said that. Oh my yeah. God. You know, and, and so I'm We're like, just so okay, picky, great. Man. We're so picky. I said, great. So now I'm going to sit with this <laughs> for like 30 years. Let me paint with acrylics. And then maybe 30 years later, I'll get over it. Okay, so I was like just super frustrated about it. And then I came across one day Windsor Newton because I spent all this money on acrylics and uh, I got a full palette of like the best acrylics I thought I could find, which was Liquitex, heavy yeah, body which acrylics. Which I can't stand now. No offense, Liquitex, yeah, but you're not no, going to be our sponsor. Yeah. Not here. No. <laughs> not on my watch. <laughs> and there goes our sponsors. <laughs> Windsor and Newton, come on. <laughs> anyway, let's go, go on. Yeah, so I, I, uh, where it was Windsor Newton artist grade acrylics, and it said they have a they have a brand new formula. It was a special binder, the stuff that they mix the pigment with that makes acrylics. It's called an acrylic polymer um, that eliminates 
the shift from wet to dry it eliminates the color and value shift. And I was like, what? And so I actually uh, bought some and I started using it and I realized, oh my God, the color that is wet dries the same color. And it's like- Pretty impressive. I'm like, why isn't this, this so, not only is it our favorite, I think it is by far, hands down, 100%. And I will stand to this. This is it's the best. It's the best acrylic, period. It's, it's the best of acrylic paint. Because uh, I mean, uh, maybe this was something that threw me off when it came to acrylic. Is that is that you know I I was so used to paint. The only acrylic I'd ever painted with was for miniatures, and it's so small you're not going to notice any sort of shifts. Right, right, right. Um, but once we started painting it, painting with it in school, it was just it's just it was crazy. frustrating. It's oh very frustrating God. to work yeah. with. I was like, I don't want to deal with this. Um, and so I went to oils where I didn't really have to, you know, all you have to worry about is some pigments dry a little bit matte, but you can oil it out right. and it just vanishes. Yeah. Um, but to, to have that ability to, so I started using this after Ray um, suggested it. I started using it on underpaintings and it's just awesome. So it I think I'm going to double down. Me. I copied him. Um, well, wait, who'd you copy though? Wait, let's go back. I copied myself. I'm the one oh, that found okay, it. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, that's right. That's right. You're the one that found it. <laughs> a me. great artist by the name of <laughs> Ray Bonilla. So, yeah, a shout out yeah. to, um, I don't know if you guys have ever heard of them, but Windsor and Newton. Um, <laughs> they are surprisingly a French company. Um, are they? they I thought very, they were they British. They very British. They sound very British, but everything's made in France. I don't know. Um, although I think their headquarters is in London, but um, all their paints, all their paints are made in France. So. Oh, I thought, but they're the no. I thought Windsor Newton were actually the queens. Like they, like the monarchy had actually. That's their paint brand. Well, yeah. I mean, they're they're. Um, sorry, I misspoke. When I say they're a, um, they are a, a British company. company, but everything that they make, all their pigments seem oh, to be okay. made in France. Right. Okay. Um, so. Yeah, it, was, it was a bad joke. They're, they're a British company. They're, they're just not using British pigments. And F in the chat if you think Tyler should stop making jokes <laughs> about Windsor Newton. I'm sorry, Windsor Newton. You're going to be our sponsor one day, and I take not it back. Anymore. Not anymore. Um, I'm sorry about what I said. Canada, Liquitex, Windsor Newton. The sponsors are dropping. Wait, Canada? We don't get Canada. Oh, I was... I was giving props to Canada. Nope. Damn it. Okay. Um, you said, thank God it? Conan I, I, wasn't Canadian. <laughs> okay, so wait, th that brings us back to, um, I still want to do a legend painting. So I feel like we're going to oh, yeah. we're gonna start. Shit, we're going to need to line up what we're doing. So now we got, we got Mad Max right. on the docket. We got legend yeah. on the docket. And now we got Conan the Barbarian. So... I have, gonna I have, have to a, figure out what we're going to do here. I have a third one that I want to run by you, before, you know, off stream too. So, or maybe no, I should do it right now. Do it right now. I think we should at least this month. I think we should do Ghostbusters. Oh, you're right. We got to do a special Halloween one. Maybe that's it. Maybe maybe it's that's Ghostbusters. It. To be good, for goodness sake. It's a pretty special Halloween. Oh, yeah. Somebody's, Somebody's coming. coming. Um, I think you're right. I think we have to do Ghostbusters. What, babe? That's a pretty spooky movie. Oh yeah, it's, it's super very scary. spooky, um, and it's got that really great Huey Lewis in the news song. I mean, um, it's not Huey Lewis in the news. <laughs> Ray Parker Jr. <laughs> they're well, the Tyler, same song, Tyler's everybody. Very upset that they're the same song. <laughs> you know, time like, time sorted it out, Tyler. Okay, I mean, no offense. I think to Ray a Parker lawsuit Jr., sorted but, it out too. <laughs> yeah, that too. <laughs> But no, totally. Um, I am 100% on board for doing a Ghostbusters Halloween special. And I gotta make I, I don't know what I'm going to paint. I, I, I want to paint like Gozer or something like that. Well, oh, that'd be cool. Nick the 96 recommended painting the Ecto-1, which is very uh, Ray Bonilla. It is very, you that's do, very you Ray do Bonilla. A, you do a fine vehicle, Raymond. Yeah. Well, thank you. I think that's probably one of the things that I'm glad did you say that because I think that I suck at it. So that's I good. I think I've and I've, I hate I doing. I think I've painted vehicles once and it was a nightmare. Um, so it great. was for you Konami. It. it was horrible. I don't recommend. Oh, it. I remember that. 
Yeah. Painting it was a Formula right One race car. Wheelhouse. It was a Formula <laughs> One, right? Race car? Well, dude, okay. This is a what? hilarious, um, I guess, <laughs> job. It, it was for Konami, but it was one of those games that they put out that has like five games in one. <laughs> So so it was like a maybe it was four games. Maybe it was four games. It was a it was a Indiana it, Jones it, type it like temple like, hunting game. It looked like 72 games though when Tyler was done with the <laughs> when I was done. When I was done <laughs> with it. It was a lot more than four. Um, so it was it was like an Indiana Jones type like temple hunting game. It was a race car game. Yeah. Um, there was a a pinball game. Pinball game. Like yeah. a pool like pinball game. The pool pool balls and then and then oh a the flying game. game a flying yeah, game yeah there was a it was a, a like a p51 <laughs> or p52 mustangs or um but anyways mustangs yeah yeah flying like world war ii flying game so i had that they needed they wanted all those elements in one so it's essentially this indiana jones knockoff character running down a street from it's Formula One, or no, it was like stock cars. It was like NASCAR. Was it stock car? Um, okay. Yeah. So it was run, running from NASCARs and all these giant, uh, like there's a temple in the background and all these giant cue balls and like, a, I don't know what you, you know, pool table balls bouncing, like huge ones bouncing down <laughs> after him. And then there's two, there's two Mustangs flying around in the sky. <laughs> it's really weird and, how um, you can't find this painting anywhere. Yeah. Uh, oh, it's erased. it's hopefully it's erased it's from history. From the internet. It's the best painting he's ever done. <laughs> I gave him my all, everyone. You got to give it your all every time. Don't forget that. I looked at. I, I tried like to look at the camera it, when I said that. You gave it too much. I think is is what I'm hearing. I did. It was actually exhausting because they wanted all the elements, all those fucking crazy <laughs> elements that I just mentioned, on separate layers. <laughs> oh my god! Yes. Yeah, um, it's out F there. F in the chat if you want to see blog. Tyler recreate that, though, Whew. on live. Yeah, Rush. I would love to paint that again. Actually, you know what um, could be really good for our spooky episode, Tyler, is your uh, collabo with Clementine. Oh yeah, so um, we had a, a, a friends of ours, Sir Ryan Hartman, Hartman, um, and his wife Wendy. They have a, a little, be wonderful little kid named Clementine. And I asked her to draw me a monster last time we were over there because I'm going to um, do a painting of that monster. I'm going to make, I'm going to take her drawing and use it as the drawing. Like I'm going to, I'm going to uh, project her drawing down. So it's like perfectly sticks with that drawing and then paint like a really photo. Real, I've seen people do this on, on the internets. Um, I'm going to paint like a really photorealistic version of her crazy monster. It's going to be super fun. I'm excited. Uh, do you have the sketch nearby? I'll totally. Actually, yeah, I put it right over here. Um, maybe I can put in the Ghostbusters somehow, turn this into like a real illustration. Oh, what do you guys wow. think? Here we go. <laughs> she so is Clem's, That's awesome. Clem's like six or something, right? Or She's five. Five? Yeah. yeah. So get ready. Clement, um, to just co host with me and Kate. I know she's amazing, we articulate. Have, She'll tell you all all about the paintings she does. She we have gave triple us, the sponsors. She gave us. A, she and Ryan collaborated on a beautiful <laughs> modern art piece like, that I genuinely love. That is hanging uh, as a wedding present in our hall right now. Oh, yeah. it's, really it's so cool. good. It's really cool. That's great! Wow, that's awesome. Well, yeah, I mean, that looks like a Ghostbusters, like the animated television show which is arguably just as good as the original movie to be honest with you arguably hey have you watched the original animated series um uh, you know what I we'll table I... that go, go ahead Kate. <laughs> jacob a sweet asks ray what is the ratio of acrylic to oil in one of your finished pieces oh good good question so yeah. depends on the piece sometimes it's like 50 50 other times it's like 30, 70, and other time like this one that I just finished up uh, was, was 70, 30 uh, acrylics to oils, a painting that I, uh, Tyler, that painting that you just saw. Oh, really? Yeah, that was 70, oh, 30 the, acrylics. The red, the red shutters? Yeah, yep, yeah, yeah. Oh, nice. So um, That's right, you did a lot of acrylic on that first. Yeah, so it, it, it all depends based off of like, 
it, it all depends on the uh, the the painting. So if I if I know that I'm gonna have to layer a lot of things, then I'll just do mostly acrylics as much as possible. Um, I was trying to get more of like a really finished look really quickly, and that's why I did that. But if if I know that I need to, I, there's not much layering, and I just need to block in some basic colors, just get something started off with. Uh, and I'm going to be painting kind of into paint a little bit more for my piece, then I'll do a little bit less, uh, way less acrylics and more oils because the oils allow me to paint in and out of it. You could do that with acrylics, by the way. You just have to be fast and it's 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 really not designed to do it. You know, you, there's there's ways you can kind of hack it to do it, but it's... it's have you maybe, been, um, you know... Speaking of that, have that hacking, have you tried... Um, Jesper, my friend Jesper Ising does all acrylic and he uses an airbrush to basically wet the image. Right. Just lightly mist it. And then he gets sort of a wet and wet work. Like he can work wet and wet just a little bit um, for a short time, which yeah, I'm going to try, try when that. I start, when I jump into acrylic here. I don't know. I don't think the chat believes you're actually going to do it. Oh, wow. Come on, chat. I'm going to do it watch next week and I'll be like I didn't do it I didn't do it you guys I have a couple big paintings I have to do in two weeks so you should do it for you. why don't you Get try it ready. out on li live brush let's just say this try it out for the first thing on live brush right because this is what I've been doing um and if you don't like it just Quit. pull the ejector sheet and uh just uh go back to oils okay all right all right Fine. You know what I'm do, saying? Do it. Do it now. Do it, do it now. now. I'm here. Kill me. I'm here. We could do Arnold Schwarzenegger impressions for the rest of this. Oh God. We only have you 33 want... minutes left. I don't think. I don't think that's enough oh, time. Oh man. Okay. Well then, fine. We won't. You're letting you're letting that prevent you, Tyler. Yeah, it's too much. It's not enough. Boy, we gave up really quickly on that. Hey, Ray. Um. This, a monkey house in the chat pointed out that uh, like if you if you kind of fuzz your eyes at your painting it kind of looks like arnold's lower lip is two giant buck teeth and now <laughs> that has ruined the painting for uh, a great majority oh of us. man <laughs> but it's very funny <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> Once you yeah see it, it's very yeah, funny i, love it. Yeah, I, I love can't it. unsee it i'm gonna leave remember it. that i did this I'm too gonna i'm not gonna i'm not gonna name the painting but i did this to a look painting at that today. yeah yeah that Totally. Hold on. I'm here. I'm here. Kill I'm me. Here. I'm here. Look at, here. That. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Dude. Right? Just paint him in. Just paint him <laughs> in. Do it. Just lean into it. <laughs> it's wow. Halloween. He's got a he's got some buck teeth. I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. Wow. Kill me. I'm here. <laughs> I'm gonna leave that alone. Stick around. A Xander list the in the chat says, "What do you think is the biggest drawback to digital painting?" Um, to me, it's you don't have a uh, an artifact, like you don't have an original. Um, otherwise, I love I love it. Like I've done it for a decade. It's my favorite. For me, is it, you would uh, you would I would have realized earlier on that I would have painted buck teeth because in my own source and everything so and i would have covered it up before it was even a thing so i think this is just a i think this is just a mashup of who framed roger rabbit and the predator i thought that's what we Two were doing amazing movies i just haven't put in my cartoon character yet i was going to save it to the end Did they come out the same year must have been close it didn't didn't predator come out the same year as blade runner no predator was 87 oh okay so the same year as Princess Bride. Well, I guess Princess Bride might have been 86. Yeah. 87, 87 for Predator, 82 for Blade Runner. Oh, okay. Who framed Roger Rabbit? Did that come out 82? Roger Rabbit, 1988. 90-something. Oh, 88. Nice. Did Ghostbusters come out in 1982? Ghostbusters. 1980. Oh, wait. Ghostbusters 1. Oh, boy. It's really hard to find that out. There's a lot of Ghostbusters. 84. Oh 84. Right. Dude, I can't what? wait for a Ghostbusters episode because we get to talk about Ghostbusters 2, which I love. Ghostbusters 2 is very good. 
It's very frightening. It's scarier than the first one. Do you like Ghostbusters too? Yes. I love it. And it's scary. They made it way scarier. I didn't know you like Ghost. I didn't know you guys like Ghostbusters too. Yeah, and the pink slime in the bathtub? No. Oh my God, yeah. Get out of here. And when they're in the... um, the tunnel and everyone's yelling and then Winston's like yelling down the tunnel and echoes. <laughs> yeah, and then she's like, Wah. oh man, that got me every time. I was horrified. Yeah. Yeah, she doesn't like awesome. scary stuff, dude. She doesn't like scary I stuff. I love scary stuff. I'm the one, I'm not the one who wet He's vegan. watching posts <laughs> the other day. Okay, everybody go out, find, you got to get a, a, a service called Shudder. And just do like a trial or whatever, but um, it has what? a scary movie. It has a scary movie on it that we just saw called what was it? What was it? Host, host. It's called Host, <gasps> not the host, not the really awesome Korean film called The Host. Um, but it's just called Host, and not it's the terrible fucking Stephanie Meyer scary. Book, the host, yeah, it's <laughs> it was it was very scary. It's about a haunted Zoom call, yes, that's fire. And it's it was completely filmed. Oh my god! Filmed and and uh, produced in the COVID era, so it's it's all done remotely. It's pretty uh, brilliant, and it's really clever. It's just it's just good. I keep I keep thinking about thinking back on it. It's only like an hour long. Totally fifty wonderful. minutes, right? Yeah, like fifty six yeah. minutes. They they kind of tied it to the limit of a or close. It's not exactly the limit of a Zoom call, but pretty close to the limit of a Zoom call. So I think it's like 40 minutes, but um, the movie's, yeah, it's 50. Did somebody screenshot this before I cover this up? It's great. This is my Don't worry, it'll live, it'll live on <clears throat> forever in the VOD. Great. Ray's, <laughs> Ray's greatest achievement. Watch this. Do it. Look it. Do the buck teeth. No, he's fixing it. No, I'm fixing oh, come it. Come on. I, thought, I was hoping he'd want? add more like white paint to it, but he's a coward. I'm paying yeah. in oils. <laughs> you can be you can't undone. Can't take it anymore. <laughs> you can paint over it. I'm almost White. done here, actually, Ray. So. Oh, God yeah. How about you, Ray? <laughs> no. We cannot. We cannot go to a part four, Ray. No, we're. I know. I'm going to finish this off camera. No photo finish. Oh, man. <sighs> I was painting. Uh, you got me talking about movies last last stream, and I I realized like. I barely did any work on my piece. I did too. Last stream, I barely did anything because we got back from the wine tasting and uh, stuff, you know. We were um, only 47 minutes late. We were only, yeah. It's like we were almost on time. You were brushing your hair. I got my hair in line. Cheesecake. His, I could fin- I mean, I could probably keep painting on this forever, but I kind of want to just call it. Um, I know. You just get, uh, I know. Uh, uh. Because I'll special edition it in 20 years. Um, I have. I, I'm gonna do. I'm gonna George Lucas everything that I have done in the past 10 years, in 20 years time. So. Oh my God. Would you? <clears throat> would you? Would you think that you were like Frazetta? Like, would you do that? Would you take paintings off walls, and just like fix them until they were done? <laughs> it's what I always tell students never to do. But um, if they're hanging, they're hanging. I'm just. I'm just gonna do it. I think. I think I'll get, just repaint everything, and burn the originals. Frazetta. So Frank Frazetta, was, for those you don't know, would often repaint some of his famous uh, covers if he didn't like it. So he'd repaint right on the original painting. Like it was a Conan the Conan the Destroyer, right? Was one. Yeah. Of them. What a, so the original what a one. Prime. <laughs> original one. Oh, but the one that he painted was way better, though. Yeah, for sure, for sure. I get it. But like but, the fact that he painted it over the I mean it's his yeah, painting. You can do yeah, it every yeah, once. Yeah. You can do it every once. But obviously like you can't over the original. Obviously you can't, according to Tyler. Well, there we go. Come on. Just like paint it again. Start over. If they're hanging, uh, they're hanging. You know, we I guess we can get like some sort of radar device out, X ray it and see the other painting if we ever wanted to. Or you could just go on, on the internet and Look at what all the different this? versions. The what? The inner what? <laughs> yeah, it's it's pretty pretty crazy, you know. Uh, but I don't I don't think I would do that. I don't know. Uh, I don't know. Actually, I was thinking no. about that the other day. I if you would repaint your stuff. Yeah, I mean, like I wouldn't repaint something like 
10 years from now, but like there's a painting that I had in my solo show that I absolutely hate. And, mm -hmm. and I walk past it every time I go up the stairs because uh, it's hanging in my, my stairway. And I'm like, that painting sucks. I, I'm going to repaint one? it one day. Which one? I want to look at it. Oh nope, yeah, I'm not, which no one, right? You'll ne you'll never know. You never know. He's not gonna tell us because he's gonna repaint it, and no one will get to know. I'm gonna go find the worst painting on your website. Yeah, she's, <laughs> now she's gonna start calling out which ones she thinks it is. Now, now you're gonna you're know about which to have your a, paintings. I think sucks. Yeah, you're gonna have an ego boost here, buddy. <laughs> the opposite of that. Oh God. That one's pretty yeah. good. It's pretty good. It's all right. <laughs> Is it is it on your website? Give me a hint. Have you taken uh, it off your website? I think it's on my website. Okay. I don't. Right. Yeah, I think so. Okay. I won't admit to it either. A what? Even if I guess no. it, even if I I nail the one. Dude, that's just no. cheating. That's cheating. I was. I thought you were gonna back me up on that, Tyler. Because <laughs> you knew that you'd be next. I know. <laughs> Oh God! Oh, no, he I'm knows. Next. He knows which one I hate. Yeah, I've made it. But very we can't clear. talk about it because because I'm not talking. We about just can't too. talk about it. Why can't we talk about it? It's it's public, right? <laughs> yeah, but I don't own it anymore, and it, I don't want to oh, say true. that you don't yes. like it. Yes, that's very true. That's a good yeah. point. Okay, let's not do that. Let's not let's not go down that road. Oh. I do like my live brush painting so far. I like your live brush painting quite a bit, Tyler. Yeah. Thanks. Um, I like your Arnold Schwarzenegger with the buck teeth. Um, this no, I don't. Like maybe this. maybe if we could just like go back to that. Actually, guys, I don't there's, like. There's lots. Oh, go ahead, of, there's lots of compliments in the chat from uh, Kay Hepburn. Tyler, you're looking good. Has that dignity of the predator. Ray, you're nice, see that nice. that camo in Penumbra is a challenge, and you're handling it pro. Look at that. Thank you so much. See, mine was, my compliment was way better than it was a way better one. It is. One. It was. That was a way better one. All right. I've figured out which Let's... painting you hate, but I'm not going to tell you. Okay. And we'll just play this game of chicken. <laughs> I can't. Honestly, Ray, I love every single one of these. There's not a single fucking painting on here that is I, I could, masterful. I, I can definitely about 90 percent of those paintings i don't like but what i know oh my God. you know i'm the same man i i don't like my paintings afterwards i, I gotta give I, them a while i gotta give them a long time and it's been some of them have been a few years and it's like you know i like the okay. new pick i'm actually i will say that i do am enjoying so far we'll see the new painting that i'm working on on the easel it's uh once it's done i'll show you tyler but well like bill mon said to me when i had a really good landscape painting going he leaned in real close and he said <laughs> don't mess it up so that's my advice to you ray on this painting that you currently like don't mess it up <laughs> oh bill oh god and i didn't mess it up okay bill if you're out there watching now i didn't mess it up I made a great landscape painting. <laughs> Bill one time came up to me and was like, I was mixing up a flesh color and I'm like, and I, I mixed up something and it was, it was way off. And, and I hear all of a sudden I hear a voice behind me going, Nope. Oh, messed up on that one. And then I tried it again and he was, and then I messed up again. He's like, Oh, messed up on that one again. And I couldn't this mix all the whole time. This, this was, this, we couldn't get this out of them until like we took <clears throat> this is honestly this is the god's own truth i think this is the case maybe maybe i remember it differently but we <laughs> couldn't get this personality out of bill until we revealed to him that we were big fans of his favorite movie of all time which is the big lebowski the big lebowski yeah and, okay and the yeah. second we revealed that to him he was getting yeah. he was getting a little he started getting a little chummy with us yeah it was we, pretty he wild. would go out to, we'd go out to like that in and out down on the pier in san francisco yeah. we yeah. walked over there with him and have, have lunch and it was it was like a turning point like we broke the shell it's pretty wild it's pretty wild he's a wild dude man rocking a milkshake uh -huh. Yeah. And then he uh, we gets ice cream, and then what do you get? He gets ice cream, and then he he drinks half of it, and then he yeah he, he gets a milk milk shake. in it. 
Now he gets a milkshake, he drinks a little bit of it, and then he goes over to the soda machine and steals <laughs> root beer. <laughs> okay. You heard that? You heard that in and out? Yeah. So, so even, if you, if, if you lost money fell off. 11 years ago, if you had just historic <laughs> profit loss. Yeah, if the books uh, weren't looking right on the root beer count, <laughs> you know why. Turned him in here. On live turned brush. him in. You're <laughs> live brush justice. Uh, uh, live one, justice. Right? Oh, no. Hey, so we need a sign emote. Damn it. Oh, God. I know. Dun, dun. We need, wait, we wait, need. Wait, you're signing it? Hang on. Cool it for a sec. So I got to move, move the camera so people can watch you. Oh, I've it. already done the whole thing. Oh, well. You didn't do the whole thing. <laughs> no, well, most of it. Hang on. Hang on. Everybody just, just, we're doing it live here, folks. We're doing I'm it waiting. live. Thank you. I haven't done the J yet, so I'm waiting for All the right. J. Go for it. Dun, Where are you dun. signing it? Oh, I see. Just it. in the darkness there in his arm. The darkness. The darkness. Tyler. You know, he's the he's the devil that makes trophies of man. Hey, Tyler from K Happy. Yeah. How do you know when it's done? Oh man, I don't. I don't know. That's the thing. It's the great, it's the great question of all time. I don't even know if this is done, but my I usually end the painting when either the deadline is there and I have to, or I'm just done looking at it, honestly. That's that's how I end a painting. And I think in this one's case, I'm just like, yeah, I could keep pumping fidelity into this and get real and noodly, but it's right at that looseness that I wanna keep. And so I'm just gonna quit. Cause I, I have, like, I, I don't, I'll admit it right now. I don't really like that Tarkin painting that I did um, because it was loose at a certain point that I really liked and then I tightened up too much. And now I just don't like it because it's too tight. Um, so I'm gonna stop here on the Predator because it's just at that looseness, that loose energetic paint stroke area that I like. And I, want, I don't wanna go beyond that and mess it up. I was, I was, looking, at the, I was looking at the wrong screen. It was a good one. That was well thought out. I was put on the spot a little bit, but so basically, I don't know. I'm just tired. Yeah, that is the my answer. Yeah, I don't know when no. it's done, but I don't. It's you know, tough. It's, it's tough. It's, it's tough. There's no way of knowing, really. Yeah, I know. I, I, yeah, I'm, I'm the same way. Usually, when I'm about to, when I hate a piece, at a I know when I'm about to finish a piece is when I absolutely hate it. And I think yeah. it's the worst thing I've ever done. That is totally so. me. Actually, I am going to put a little more in this, but um, I feel the same. It's like, I'm like, I hate this thing. I hate it. I want to burn it. So it must be done. <laughs> okay. No, wait, pause. Tyler, you said you're just going to put more in. What, what did you just see that made you go against what you just said and continue to work on this painting? Where? Um, I just want... I want a little right here on his shoulder. I want just a little lighter, just slightly lighter paint. So I'm just going to, because there's like a light behind him in the reference. So I want to kind of pump that up just a smidge. Is that like to add hair. more contrast with his, with the shoulder in the background? Yeah, because it's, it, it will, it'll add to this kind of glare. So there's a light back here. And all of these shadows got kind of lighter as they approach that light. So I think if I can, pump this just a little bit. Um, I'm going to mix up the right color first. But um, if I can pump it just a smidge, it'll it'll add to that glare. Tiniest amount. You know, I could, I know I could finish a lot sooner. I don't know why I feel like I'm like, I got to make, the, you know, I I want this to be the best thing in the world. And it's like, they I get to a point also where I take a lot of the fun out of my paintings. So I will have to be better at, plus I'm slower, I'm a slower painter than Tyler is. Because yeah, I care about all, my fans. I care about our viewers. He really does. And 
obviously I do too. But, um, <laughs> I do too. I just get done. I get done with a piece, dude. Like, I, I yeah, move on I, to something else. Yeah, I completely and utterly, I envy that. I right, always I'm envy calling that. it. I'm calling it now. I like. I stay awake at night, thinking I've let down. All of my my view, all of our viewers, and you know, F in the chat if you think he has let you down. <laughs> let down Bill Mon. And my hero, okay. best captain ever, Captain Cisco. Oh man, yeah, Avery Brooks, the best. Avery Brooks, punched Q in the face. You're I mean, he's automatically the best. Wait, so when you fail, you're letting down your teacher, Bill Mond, and Captain Benjamin Cisco. It was very specific. Yeah, well, he's a commander at the beginning of the show, but <laughs> I mean, we don't want to correct you yes. on live stream. I've never even <laughs> seen Deep Space Nine. Get out of my face. I know we've gone over this. Damn it. Yeah, I think I've tried, chat. Visiting. Everyone in the chat, I've tried. Just, I'm trying just to like, force feed Deep Space Nine to her. <laughs> that's a way. That's definitely the way to uh, to inter to make somebody like it, right? You, you will, will like it. this. Yeah, you don't never, do that. You never have. You, are, you. We've talked many times about how we're going to marathon it, but the perfect moment hasn't arrived. That's true. Yeah, we're gonna find true. the right time. We'll find that's the right true. time. Ooh, here's a great question from Xander Lisk. Do you guys keep your art from when you were kids or early on in school? Um, I have some. I have yeah, I, I have this one that yeah that Kate just whispered, Dragon's Jewel, that I did in eighth grade. So fully, <laughs> I wrote I wrote the whole book, and I illustrated the whole book in color pencil. Whoa! And it's most of the stuff in it is like is um, Warcraft two ripoffs. <laughs> So it's mostly stolen. Yeah, it's a piece yeah. of like contraband the, art. The trolls are like directly out of Warcraft too. The the ogres are right out of Warcraft too. Um, but you know, I want to redux that book. I, there you go. I think would you, should. Tyler? Yeah, that, you, you just answered your yeah. own question, though. You just answered Wait. it. You answered the thing we were talking about before. Would you go back and redo artwork? Oh yeah, I would. Dragon's Jewel. I would redo it. Two words: Dragon's Jewel. I think it needs a little rewrite. It needs a little bit of editing. No. <laughs> oh my god. Well, that, yeah. That's so that's the one. That's the one, everybody. Dragon's Jewel. Wow. I even I I bound it in leather, man. It's you did? Like, it's like fake leather. How did you it's bound all it? Bound up. What? Uh, and you were what? How old were you? I was in eighth grade. Got a huge A on that project. To tell you well, that. How, how, where did you find some place you could <laughs> buy something in leather from? I did it myself. It was like I used like cardboard for the book, and then I like got fake leather and like wrapped it around the outside of the book. F in the chat if you are rolling your eyes at this right the, now. This is, I mean, it was obviously some teacher's pet bullshit. But don't don't they don't you have like what? fake? You've got like fake jewels glued to the cover as well. Like it's pretty. Yeah, decorative. I mean, I oh my, I couldn't God. find I couldn't find jewels, but they made like you know the sticky lettering, and they made it like. It was like sparkly green and like sparkly red, um, you know, like Christmas lettering essentially. So I like I, I put that on the outside. Like what I really wanted, and I was in eighth grade, you know, so I didn't have anything to do this, but I wanted it like embossed into the leather. But I had no idea to do that. Well, so of I just, course, of I just course. So stuck I mean, on I mean, some garbage. You, you, you just bound it in. I mean, you had to set up with just binding it in leather. And yeah, so I bound it in human flesh um, and. Yeah, it was a Necronomicon. Oh my God, when I just when I think you can't get any worse, man. I just <laughs> I can't beautiful. believe you've never read Dragon's Jewel, right? Well, no, we no, no. Very I've never, I've obviously I've never bound anything in leather either, and uh, I never will. I, I did a whole comic story. before that, man. A whole comic about a super dog and a super cat. What was it called? I, Dog's I Jewel. Forget. It was probably called Super Dog. <laughs> Yeah, I, I tell you, Dragon's Jewel one. is like, you know, is like would be the perfect it it, it it's viably it's a viable title for a movie that would have or Netflix series. Like the ones that like come out from like like that Netflix like, sponsors, but they're really TV series in like Prague or something Grand. like that. Yeah, they're like yeah. A, they're like a Polish TV show. 
Yeah, they're a closed TV show, and it's just like Dragon's Jewel. It's like we got to come up with yeah. the title really quickly because this one doesn't. This the current title does not translate well into English. It was definitely a, a hybrid of, like, it was like the Lord of the Rings and like a a D and D game that I had played like a few years prior. It's just like a mix mash of everything. Um, and it's gold, really. It's gold. It's golden. <laughs> And I'm gonna bring it back. And it's we're actually leather. A, a it's actually leather. It's actually leather and and yeah. costume jewelry. All right. This oh. time I'm gonna use real leather. Ray. Uh, yeah. Same question. Where Where's your dragon's jewel? Uh, I do have my old artwork from, uh, I think from, uh, I think my parents have saved my old old artwork from elementary school. But I have my artwork that I have from junior and uh, junior year in undergrad. Oh and yeah, yeah. I, I think that it doesn't even, Dragon's Jewel doesn't hold a candle to what I had. <laughs> let's just say, I, yeah. I, let's just say I did an illustration on, uh, like it was like a, for we had like an article assignment for like a, uh, <laughs> A cover for this uh, newspaper, regional newspaper. We actually got assignments that we all, we were all vying for, like uh, covers for this regional newspaper that uh, was out that came, would come out called the and um, what we. Was it called? It's called the Chautauqua Word. I don't even know if it's around anymore. Is this like in Queens? No, this is in undergrad. This is when I'm like oh oh and uh, outside of Buffalo. Then. Twenty years old, yeah. And so, uh, so yeah. The, 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 I'm telling you, and it was a cheerleading competition. That was the article about it. And let's just say, oh boy, let's just say I thought it was the best thing I'd ever done in my life, and and mm -hmm. uh, turns out it uh, fell just a little short of that. You know? <laughs> so. you know, I. I did all these like play movie posters in undergrad and they're just hot garbage. But yeah, I agree. I, I thought they were amazing at the time. I was like, oh my God, this is awesome. Tyler, I I told myself, I'm like, I think I am a realist. I think I I think I'm a mm -hmm. I am I could feel being a oh, like across the lineage, part of the lineage that is like Norman Rockwell and NC Wyatt. This I literally thought this. Wow. I was I was a very delusional person. Please, where is this piece? I'm bringing Dragon's Jewel to the next episode so people can see it. It's in my so, parents' house. It's in my parents' house. Tell I your dad, to... tell your dad to take a photo of it. Oh God. I know that'll be hard for him to do, but it he would, can do it. Yeah. It would take well what when do people want it? By next uh, two years from now? I can guarantee in twenty twenty seven. He's so gonna be down in the it. basement. Your mom's gonna be like, "What are you doing?" And he's like, "I'm looking for my old camera." And he's gonna be like, "Getting a film camera out." Yeah, yeah. They'll send you the negatives. Where's my old camera? I threw that out 15 years ago. You always throw out my stuff. <laughs> Raymond needs me to photograph this old drawing of his. Hey. So is it a painting? Oh yeah. yeah uh, it's. What man? Uh, Tyler, it's many things. Um, is it of cheerleaders? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was the That's intent. Long, yeah. I was, okay. That was the intent. That so was there, the intent. Are, there are cheerleaders in the imagery. So you're saying. Yeah. You recognize yeah. them as cheerleaders. Uh, you know, let's just, I, this is well, where I, I had, had, had self anointed myself as a realist. So I just want to point that out. So, you better bring this uh, yeah. to the next episode. I'm gonna. I'll. I can't. I. I, I, I will I, call Francisco <laughs> myself and tell him to go find it. I listen. I will. I. I'm telling you. I. It's buried in my parents' house, and I will one day bring it to Live Brush. I. Yeah. I. Yeah. So. All right. All right. The we'll problem. You've heard it here, folks. Yeah. Junior year in college. Junior year in college. I was. Raymond uh, Bunny is special. Good. That was not very good. <laughs> Hey, remember that? Remember that? Uh, uh, that hard that like crime illustration I did uh, in Wait, in uh, school. In, yeah, oh, in Bill's yeah. class. Yeah, yeah. I that remember was, us that was getting like we we were like in the studio way after hours getting photo reference for this. Yeah, and it, the photo reference was awful because I oh my god. It's like I look back on every the, angle possible. Oh yeah, I I I just like completely destroyed it. It was unusable photo reference. Well, I actually found yeah. it. 
recently, of like a couple of years back, and it was like useless, useless. It's like a it's like a Tarantino movie. It's like there's like eighteen rim lights oh, all over God. the place. We thought we were so cool. We thought we were so cool, Tyler. And you know what? We I'm like, and we were, you know. God, that painting sucked so much. And so, remember you... that I did one in school that was Julius Caesar getting like attacked by all these. Yeah, and yours people. looked like it the Sistine so Chapel. Bad. It's Sistine <laughs> Chapel compared to my my hard case crimes, you know, Dude. pulp pulp special. Oh my god. No way. No way. My my piece looked like trash. I yeah, have it so, still, actually. Really? I have all that stuff from art school. Yeah. Well, I remember you have that painting. I wanted to throw it out, and you refused to throw it out, and so you hung it up in your studio with and put a piece of artist tape on it, saying "Another Ray Bunny, a masterpiece." <laughs> yeah. Every, every time people, somebody new would come in, be like, "What the hell is that?" <laughs> Dude, I mean, that means do I still have that painting then? I, I mean, I didn't take it. Oh shit! I hope I got it somewhere. I, didn't I definitely it. have it somewhere then. Yeah, actually, I have one of your paintings. I'm looking at it right now. You're you're a Roman centurion. Remember from the uh, the Roman uh, reference book that we all bought? Oh shit! Yeah, I still have that yeah. book. Yeah, it's a bunch so of like I. British, um, like cosplayers essentially, but they're total obsessed with like, ancient Rome. Right. Even though like Rome spent like about five minutes, you know, historically there, but you know, <laughs> they built a like, bridge across the you know the Thames. but they were like so. so hardcore it's like incredible you know no one loves the no one loves the romans like the british <laughs> that's uh, like ray you've got four minutes to finish your painting okay all right come on i'm done i'm not even all right all right i haven't even moved up here we, i'll we'll do tell, a, tell. I, i'm gonna do a little stop motion thing to end it you know like uh, tell you tell us why don't you take more questions tyler Oh yeah, um, hit us with more questions, folks. Okay, hey, what do you guys a, think? here's a question from the Fat Baron. If there's any book cover you could paint, which Chuck Tingle book would it be and why? Wait, which who? Chuck Tingle. I don't know that author. Ray, do you know who Chuck Tingle is? I have no idea who yeah, Chuck Tingle is. I didn't think so. I, I responded to the Fat Baron earlier and said, these goons do not know who Chuck Tingle is, watch. Yeah. Uh, Chuck Tingle makes super ridiculous uh, extremely graphic gay romance novels. Oh, okay. Well, whichever oh, one this best one is, then that's what I'd paint from. <laughs> or just say yes. One. The answer. The answer is yes. Best Chuck yeah. Tingle book. No, they're all. But that's the thing. They're all yeah. the best. I'll paint them all. Yeah. Uh, there's one called "Not Pounded by Anything." Six, okay. Six platonic like tales one. of non-sexual encounters. Uh, the Space Raptor Butt Trilogy. Okay, I call that one. Oh, damn it. Um, damn it. First. There is scary stories to tingle your butt. Okay, um, that's pretty good. Because I could do Tyler, a riff on that one. You know I what, could do a riff on that Tyler, one. Tyler, no, no, no. I think the answer is, and I'm going to go ahead and, 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 and forego and forfeit my pick, okay? Because right. I think you, of all people, are a person of standing when it comes to taking multiple elements and fusing them together so that they feel like they are one. I mean, like a montage. Okay. Okay. Like a, a no, like a Konami. Like we're yes. talking. I want you oh, to yeah. repaint. Oh yeah. Revisit the Konami. Pull right. another Konami. A, one. a, a, a disconnected St montage. A Drew Struzan. Yeah. Um, yeah. How about this yeah. one? I feel like this one might fit the bill for Tyler really well. Helicopter man pounds dinosaur billionaire ass. Oh, dumb. I can do that one. I'm doing that one. Cause that really lines up with the Konami piece that I that I did. So. <laughs> sure. Let's do it. And this is what happens when Tyler takes questions by himself. Yeah, what's the next question on the, on the <laughs> docket? Uh, that's really it. It's mostly people <laughs> just that, that, that's, uh, that's, that's it. Yeah, that's, that's okay. kind of the last question well, we thanks have. For, thanks for the questions, how everybody. About, how about this one? Bigfoot pirates haunt my balls. Mm. Mm. No? No. It, 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 just, you know, the thing is, I... I'm not one of those. What what are the, what are the Bigfoot people again? Sasquatch? No, um, no, no. But like, what, the, the, they're, they're like the, you know, what I'm talking about like the the trekkers, but they're Bigfoot people. Um, yeah, they're like Xeno Xeno hunters or something like that. Yeah, yeah. The, the ones that are right, the guys that know Bigfoot's out there and they're gonna find him. <laughs> I just uh, I don't we had a long conversation about Bigfoot with with uh, Chris Ron one time, right? Remember that? Oh yeah, because Chris. 
Chris did this amazing Bigfoot painting. I think like right when we were out of school, he did this little Bigfoot painting. I loved it. I asked him to like send me prints of it. He sent me these little bookmarks of it. Um, but yeah, I think we, because I brought that up, we started talking about Bigfoot for hours. And we, we like, it scared the hell out of me. I was just sit, sitting, sitting there watching, like listening to both of them talk. And they were just talking about all of the, basically the archeological like findings and what's, you know, and sort of the background on it, you know, cause Tyler, I, Tyler's basically, uh, you know, he minored in ancient civilization and stuff. And so there was, it ended, I remember it, there's this whole thing. And then it ended on like, cause like there were some humans that actually ran into these, the, these fucking beat things like in the mountains. Like, can you imagine running across one of these? Oh, right. Like, these well, cause they were, they were probably running in, I think we were talking about like people that probably ran into, um, like Australopithecus or like um, yeah. some of the bigger pri like primates that are now extinct, um, as well as like Neanderthal. Like when when um, Homo sapiens made it to Europe, they ran into Neanderthal. So that'd be like running to Bigfoot. All right, save it. How we do? Week. Oh, we're over. yeah. How are we doing on time here? Okay. We, are we over? We're over. We're Shows done. The show we're is over. over. Oh okay. no! Um, down. <laughs> everybody, just remember, Bigfoot's out there. Always keep looking up. I and I'm going to finish my painter la la later off stream, I promise. I'll post a good photo of it. <laughs> yeah, Ray lost the race um, because he was talking about Bigfoot too much. <laughs> and now, uh, and we'll be back next week. I think we're going to, let's do... Um, we're not back next week. We're getting... We're not we're, back next week. No, it's remember, it's our wedding day next weekend. Oh, yeah. Sorry, everyone. We're do, It's not actually our wedding day because we're going to postpone until this horrible year is over with. Um, but it would have been... It would have been, and we're gonna wow. go. Um, so maybe we can, yeah. We'll 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 figure out. We'll keep everyone posted as to what we're gonna do, um, but we'll reschedule. Um, but yeah. The, uh, so uh, Ray, wanna sign us off? Yeah. So uh, well, thank you very much, everyone, for hanging out with us. Thank you, Kate, for uh, keeping the ship uh, somewhat uh, floating uh, today. <laughs> Uh, and uh, yeah, so you can find my work. Well, actually, where can they find your work, Tyler? Um, you can find my work at tylerjacobsonart.com. Um, I'm I post a lot more often on Instagram, so that's also Tyler Jacobson Art. You can find me there, and you can find uh, my work at raymondbonilla.com. Uh, I post a ton on Instagram at uh, Ray Bonilla Painter, and uh, yeah, I hope uh, this was uh, educational and fun uh, and uh. I guess, I hope you didn't fall asleep. Or if you did, that's great too. Yeah, uh, hope it was a good Yeah, so, uh, so I hope, uh, Kate, you streaming uh, after this, right? I'm not. I was going oh, to, okay. but I'm, 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 too, I'm too headached up. Okay, no problem. Mm -hmm. I was going to say, uh, but uh, the second Kate streams, check it out. Uh, and because it's awesome. And it's actually oh, a well-run uh, Twitch stream. Yeah. It's amazing yeah. what Kate can do when... Uh, she doesn't have to, uh, you know, uh, uh, corral a, a bunch of hyenas uh, mm -hmm. with paintbrushes. <laughs> in her. Yeah. Anyways, that, all right, everyone. Well, thank you very much for perfect description. <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much for coming. Uh, again, all of these paintings uh, that we we post uh, are for sale, so just shoot us a message if you're interested in them. And uh, yeah, happy painting, and uh, we'll see you not next week, but next the week time. after. We'll next time. Next time. Mm -hmm. Bye. Thank you, everyone. Good night, everybody.